as I am sharing screen, it's quite difficult to see uh, responses or anything like that. So if anyone in the in the audience this morning can just say yes or no or hooray, yes, we can see the screen. Yep, we can see it. Fantastic. Thank you so much. So thank you so much and welcome to, to the virtual open day, as I've said. Um, we are going to, you know, go through a couple of things. So I just want to give you an overview and a lay of the land of what to expect this morning. Of course, it won't be a, a, a much of a muchness if I don't introduce who we really, really are. But after that, I'm also going to take every guest through our learning management system, or as you can see, the abbreviation for that, we call it the LMS. And um, this is a powerful tool that our students, once they've enrolled, with um, e-tuition can access um, its additional help support and um, it's everything that they need to know throughout the educational journey with us in this tuition uh, segment is is loaded onto this wonderful platform that's been created um, but on top of that this platform is only as good as our, our educators right and our educators um, provide lessons and they are you know, always available to make sure that they embark the best education and, and provide the best detail to everyone. So, Yvette has, you know, um, greatly appreciated on the mock lecture that you're going to be doing this morning, just to give you a bit of a taste of what it's like to sit in, and he will introduce himself a little bit later on. We're also going to find out a little bit about academic operations, as well as the administrative side, because, hey, we understand, we live in South Africa, life happens, you never know when we will go from level two to level four of load shedding or you know someone might get sick so what is the protocols and the way forward when i do miss my session or i am unable to sign on and um, these are things that we also need to address and of course there's a q a session afterwards where we will be uh, discussing additional questions you might have as well as the application and registration process with e-tuition um, and that's kind of what we've got prepared so getting into the slot of things who is e-tuition what it is that we do well e-tuition together with its teaching experts we offer online to use uh, tuition excuse me using the latest technology and skills to create a virtual classroom to impart extra support classes to our learners in addition to that we really do pride ourselves with an organized schedule of topics throughout the year aiming to cover all sections based on the CAPS curriculum or revised CAPS curriculum from grade 10 to 12. There are also, ladies and gentlemen, um, you know, our aspirations is to expand this from grade 8 to 12 and also not just to the CAPS curriculum. So you need to understand this is why we started, how we started, what we are at this moment, but our vision to, to grow as an institution providing academic online tuition and support for students in South Africa is much bigger than just what I've just mentioned to you. So, you know, your support, of course, is always, is always appreciated. And this is helping us to achieve the vision in the long term to ensure we are able to unlock academic um, success for every student in South Africa. So what is it is that we really, really offer? A lot of people have have asked. Well, it is a fully supported tuition, of course, like I've mentioned, from highly expert tutors, which you will see, um, which will provide advice and guidance from the start to the end of the classes. It's engaging. We are collaborative. We believe in online interactive learning experiences. Ladies and gentlemen, this is not your traditional conventional one-on-one. -on -one. This is creating a virtual classroom with a diverse set of learners who all have difficulties with specific content or subject or topics, all collaborating together with their educator to solve, understand, and actually achieve that success. There's real-time and instruction so it's not just a pre-recorded video that you can download and view but you're actually sitting live in class um, as well as having access to that video afterwards it's our virtual classroom where you can chat there's virtual whiteboard technology and a lot more that is included in that it's hands-on right i know um there was talks about potential testing us this morning so i do hope you have your your academic brains on for the mock lecture a bit later on but it is hands-on to reinforce the lesson to ensure it is studied towards actually understanding and not just really studying to pass that is stuff that we need to take into consideration online delivery all right there is no need to physically go somewhere you don't have to travel you don't have to 
you know, go to a place where you might feel that your safety is at risk, you know, given the fact of the current situation of the COVID-19 pandemic. This is all done online, the comfort of your own home, which is fantastic. And then, of course, we have inductions and we have orientations because what type of institution would we be if we didn't actually introduce you, induct you and orientate you on what we do at eTuition? Additional to that, what is the benefits to our learners? Well, you know, like I've said, it's real-time engagement with a tutor and our peers. There's no need for physical travel, as I've mentioned. You know, the attend from tuition from the comfort of your own home. So if you want to stay in bed in your in your um pajamas to attend your lecture, you know, provided you didn't have to go to school. Um, fantastic. You are welcome to do that. No one's going to judge you in this in this realm. Of course, we also focus on visual interactive live and contextual learning. And this is the most important key factor is that we have a unique learning platform that you know, contains all the relevant notes, recordings, revisions of each lecture that has been covered. So if there was a concept you can't remember or a call, or you can't remember what was said, or there was maybe for whatever reason, a poor connection at that moment in time that you've experienced, you can go back, you can go view it, you can engage with the content. And that helps you as a student to achieve your academic success while on your pathway to getting to where you need to be um, with e-tuition support. Now, how do we actually do it? Now, our learning management system, like I've mentioned, an approach to how we adapt, conduct our classes and tuition support is was provided and has taken learners, if I can put it like this, we've taken their needs into consideration. And we built a foundation surrounding this and saying, you know, how do we aim to fully providing learners with an experience that is not, you know, excluding, but it's inclusive, it's interactive, and it's contextual. So it's not a difficult process to understand or it's a lot of information that might not be relevant. But to really also say, hey, I want to potentially make some new friends. You know, I might be connecting with someone in Cape Town or Durban or Johannesburg um, that's had the same issues with me. And we can troubleshoot through some of these past papers or some of these difficult questions that we might not understand. So this is my privilege at this moment in time, ladies and gentlemen, to actually introduce our learning management system to you. Um, it is something that, you know, I must admit, it's something that was created as, as from a marketing and recruitment perspective. It is really something to be proud of to see what the, our academic teams have come up with. I can't claim credit for this, so please, you know, don't thank me for this. Thank our hardworking academic team for putting this together. And I'm hoping this link works. I've been testing it the whole morning, so it should take me to where I need to be. And I hope everyone can see um my screen. Now, this is what we call the learning management system. So as a student who has registered with eTuition, so and we'll talk about registrations a bit later, but once you are registered, you get access to your own unique LMS system or learning management system. This tool, if I can refer to it as or educational tool, rather, that's a better description of it, actually provides you with a full on overview of what is going on. So this is the, of course, the homepage, as we can see, it's our homepage. This is the first page. You'll have access to your student hub. If you are enrolled for courses, your courses will also show you where um, there's now a blank space. Because of course, I'm not enrolled for anything, you know, because I think I might not do as great at mathematics in grade 12 this year. But hey, you know, I've been there, done that, passed and got them a trick. I thank you so much for that. But this is where you will see all your courses. In addition to that, there's also your dashboard, which we're going to look at, a calendar, and of course, additional courses, which I will show you how it works. Now, specifically with our student hub, um, which I will access now, there are a couple of things that you will see that you can engage with your peers and learn from. Now, like any good platform and any good learning platform, we've also introduced a couple of additional aspects, such as a profile where you can actually see your own profile. You can go and update your profile. You can see courses that you are registered for. You can also see exactly things that you can add on to make you a bit more visible. If you want to be anonymous, you're more than welcome to probably do that. But you can see your email address, name and surname. You can go tell people a little bit about yourself, where you're located, even drop in a picture of yourself so people can see your face. So when they engage with you, you can do that. There's options to add an interest, stuff that you like. So if you're into sports or you're into gaming or you're into, um, you know, hiking, 
these are kind of things you can put there and you never know you might just find someone that you can collaborate with who's got the same interests as you in addition to that we also have a chat that you can actually chat to your peers and you can send them a message on a group or in private and say hey hello how are you you know my name is so and so and you can just say hello it's quite easy to do it you know engage ask questions can you help me and of course um, what can happen is that your peers can respond and you guys can start cool conversations on this. Now, specifically back to, to our, if we go back to our homepage, our student hub is also quite an important aspect. There's a lot of aspects in the student hub that you will see that's relating to your timetable, essentials, some student helps and a schedule or lesson schedule. Now, this is where you find as a student, when you are enrolled, everything that you need to know about what is going on for the subjects or the sessions that you've enrolled for. So very important to go there and say, hey, let me go look at my student hub. What can I do? Where can I come from? Um, and exactly, you know, what is it? So if we look at a timetable, we can see here's some of the timetables that's up at the moment. There's some revision timetables. Yes, we've been doing some grade 12 revision. So as an administrator, ladies and gentlemen, I just have to say that I have this view. Some students might not see this, but if you are grade 12 and you have enrolled for some of the revision sessions that's already taken place, um, you know, you will see what is happening where. So if, for example, you have missed a session and you wanted to really sign up for, for, uh, for accounting and you wanted to do a session or, a, you know, conduct a past paper, as you can see, for accounting that is happening on the 16th of November, quickly go back, register for the session and Bob's your uncle. There we go. You attend and you get access to that to that aspect itself. Now, in addition to that, I mentioned to everyone there is a dashboard. Now, the dashboard will give you a quick overview of everything that is up and coming and going on. Now, we can see there's um, a life sciences aspect coming up on the 1st of November. As an example, this is now put there um, to show you guys. So there's an upcoming event. We can see it. It's in the calendar. You can see what is up and coming and if there are sessions that you haven't registered for, potentially register for those sessions as well. And this will be, again, in your calendar. As we can see, I've been enrolled for a couple of subjects that's been taking place. And again, as an administrator on the platform, I have an overview. But this gives students kind of to say, OK, great. I can see that I've got mathematics on Friday. And you can go click on it. And it will tell you not only the date, but the times. And you can go to this activity. And on that, it will tell you exactly what's going on. Now, ladies and gentlemen, please note, it is it is something that has happened but as we can see it will tell you exactly where it is you can add it to your calendar so you can't miss it so you say rather add stuff to your calendar so you know what is going on um, and pretty much on that that is a very important aspect to know adding stuff to your calendar i know life gets busy sometimes we forget we register for a session so we do encourage learners when you have registered for certain subjects play around, go into the LMS and make sure you add that to your calendar that is synced to the email that you provided us with. McKenna later, as I've mentioned, will touch base on everything into that. And that's it. We also have courses. And just to give you, so there is, there is a reason why I'm going into life sciences, you guys will see, but we can also see there are sessions. All right. So you can see hidden from students. Again, um, I'm an administrator just to touch base on that. There are a couple of things that happen. There's essentials. We can see there are there there's a schedule. There's things that's happened in life sciences. We can ask your teacher, right? How can we help you with your grade seven? So there are aspects to engage with your educators, with your peers, and even things that we do is going to add some past papers on for students to work through, to prepare, specifically now with a focus, for example, on grade 12. For grade 10 and 11, if there are any other test papers or test questions we can add in, we definitely do that. Now, ladies and gentlemen, you know, on top of that, this is, you know, in a, in a very brief, because there's so much more to this amazing system overview of the power that lies in the system of our LMS and the opportunity for a student to go back, engage and consistently make sure that they are on top of their coursework. But to have a system is great, but to have an educator who is experienced, passionate, engaging and interactive, 
This gives me the great opportunity and pleasure to introduce our lecturer for today, um, Navet. He is our Life Sciences Grade 12 educator, um, and he's going to be conducting a small mock lecture this morning um, to give everyone on, on this meeting this morning in this open virtual open day session a little bit of a taste of what it feels like to be a student of e-tuition. Navid, the table and the floor is yours. Um, thank you so, so much. I'm going to mute and I'm just going to pour, I'm going to stop my video for this session. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jean. Okay, good day to ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Uh, I'm going to go straight into my session. It's actually grade 12. I just would like to, if everybody can see my screen, I have the brain picture up on the screen. Is that clear? Hello? Can anyone, can anyone okay. confirm? All good. Okay, excellent. Thank you, Nietzsche. All right. So um, to the parents, basically with life sciences, I've chosen a, a, a diagram of the brain because um, that's what all our kids are actually using right now as they're going into the examinations. And I just want to take you through some of the features as I would deliver this lesson to a grade 12 life science learner. Um, which is um, in paper one of the grade 12 NSC examination. I just wanna show you a few things uh, regarding the brain. Um, I would like to now look at, <clears throat> let's just go to annotation. So I'll go into annotation and then I'm gonna use a spotlight. Okay, so here we have the first part of the brain you're looking at is the cerebrum. The cerebrum is the largest part of the brain. So when the learner is engaged with me, the first thing that they require to do is to understand the labels, the labels and the positions of the parts of the brain. And we look at the cerebrum. The cerebrum is the largest part of the brain and it controls your five senses, your touch, your taste, your smell, eyesight, etc. Most importantly, it controls higher thought processes. So I would begin by asking a learner, what did he or she do on Christmas Day in 2016? And the first thing the learner is going to do is probably look at, and when the learner is looking at me and I'm going to look at the learner and say, the eyes goes up. Now, you ever wondered why your eyes goes up? And he's like rolling up. Wow, what did I do? That's because look at the position of the cerebrum. The cerebrum is found at the top of the brain. So you're, you, you are actually trying to, I get that information, that long-term memory. And so you automatically wonder, oh, just look at the top. And then you try and access that part of the brain, which controls your higher thought processes, which is the cerebrum, which controls your five senses. It's the cerebrum. It's the largest, it's the most, to me, a very, very important uh, part of the brain. So that's your cerebrum. That's one of those things that we can look at. I'm now going to go on to this little fellow here. It's called a hypothalamus. But just below this hypothalamus, there's a small P-shaped structure where my cursor is. It's called a hypothesis, the hypothesis of pituitary gland. That is important for releasing important hormones such as uh, um, FSH and LH in women, uh, the growth hormone for helping us to grow bones, strong bones, etc. But just above that, I'm going to go to this hypothalamus. So when the learner is actually engaged with me, I create an acronym on this. It's actually a very nice one. Um, so what I would, I would share the screen with the learner and the learner will go then go to his or her book and then will have this, probably they can, when they can even download this diagram. If you take the hypothalamus, I would tell, instruct the learner, there's this hypothalamus here, go write T, P, A, S, T, E. I'm going to go again. I'm going to instruct the learner probably up here. So write T, P, A, S, T, E. I'm going to ask the learner, what does that stand for? And the learner is going to say to me, oh, that's, that looks like T, P, A, S, T, E. That looks like tea paste, which means toothpaste. So in the morning when you wake up, the first thing that you're going to do is you're going to go brush your teeth. So here is the function of the hypothalamus. It actually is T-paste. What is T-paste? Now we're thinking, what is this T-paste? T-paste 
is the control of the functions in the acronym where I'm going to come here, T for body temperature, P for blood pressure, A for appetite, S for sleep, T again for thirst, and E in wake up in the morning, how you're feeling, it's your emotions. So there the learner now has got an acronym, hypothalamus in the exam. They give you a label and they say to you, what is the function? What is the name of the structure of the brain? What is the function of that part? And you say, oh, I remember I learned this in intuition. It's the hypothalamus. It's about me waking up in the morning, brushing my teeth. It's tea paste. And the learner knows now, tea, body temperature, blood pressure, appetite, sleep, thirst, emotion, pain. The learner's got a concept. And that's like a two to three mark question in the exam. You got it. We move on to other parts of the brain, the cerebellum. Now, how does the learner learn about the cerebellum? Metric learner learning about the cerebellum. This little fellow here, the cerebellum, in the back of our brain, and the stem of our brain, those two are often mixed concepts. So to separate them and to, um, to prevent a misconception by a grade 12 life science learner, this is how I would explain. The cerebellum looks like kind of like a kidney. It's at the back of the brain. So it's something like this here. So our, our, our kids, uh, they watch TV, they watch uh, wrestling, uh, sports, rugby, you name it. And you notice that there are injuries that they are, they are sports uh, men and women incur. So I say to them, and there's one easy example I give. It's about the WWE or WWF, the American wrestling, etc. And then, you know, they do all sorts of gruesome things. And then suddenly they get hurt on the back of the head. And then when they get hit at the back of the head, what happens? You ask the learner, what happens? Is the, is, is the wrestler still standing? I say, no, the wrestler is on the floor. Now, why did they fall? It's because if you get hit at the back of the head, then that's your cerebellum that has lost its ability to control your balance and equilibrium. Hence, it means that the cerebellum is in charge of maintaining balance and equilibrium in a human being. It also controls your voluntary movements, such as walking and running. So now I got the learner to understand the cerebellum is in charge of maintaining balance and equilibrium and my voluntary movements. So uh, a level three question could be asked in the NSC exams. Uh, label the part, give the functions, or rather not give the function. Explain the consequences. The level three question can say, explain the consequences if this label, labeled part, were to be damaged. And now the learner now recalls, I learned this in e tutor. My tutor taught me that if this one, this is a structure, looks like a kidney found at the back of the brain. If it is damaged, I lose my, I lose my maintenance of balance and equilibrium. And then the learner's got three marks. Simply by annotation and through a learning from the e-tutor. Let's go to the cerebellum, from the cerebellum, I'm gonna to go to the medulla oblongata. Medulla oblongata is a stem of the brain, like a plant stem. The medulla oblongata is also, every part of the brain is important, but this little fellow here, the stem of the brain, the medulla oblongata, controls your involuntary actions. Involuntary actions such as controlling your heartbeat rate, your key features of why we are living, your heartbeat rate, your breathing rate, the dilation, meaning expansion of your blood vessels or the constriction of your blood vessels, depending on which organ requires more or less blood, so these involuntary actions are controlled by medulla oblongata. And so your heartbeat rate, your breathing rate, all of those involuntary actions. How does the learner not get confused between these two, which is a common misconception in my experience of teaching life sciences for the last 20 years. I say to the learner, cerebellum, remember, WWF. Remember, maintenance, balance, and equilibrium. If the question gives you a biological term, Part of the brain that controls involuntary actions such as heartbeat rate, breathing rate, etc. Medulla oblongata. Okay. Now I'm going to just go to we've given cerebrum. We looked at the higher thought process. In fact, uh, ladies and gentlemen, this cerebrum is is the in this part of the brain, largest part of the brain, is the one that is allowing us to grasp what I am just saying because it's involving your memory, involving your judgment. It's it's your thinking process. I'm going to go to one last one, just in this small lecture, just to give you an idea. This bundle of nerves here, everybody can see this bundle of nerves here. It's called a corpus callosum. Now, a corpus callosum 
is a bundle of nerves that joins the left part of the brain or the right part. So in other words, the brain has two hemispheres. So if I open it up like this here, I would see a right hemisphere and I'll see a left hemisphere. Now there's, there's a small brain, gra brain game that I want to just quickly finish off with. Um, and it's like this here. So if everybody could just do what I am saying to give you some idea about the corpus callosum. Um, before I do that there, I just want to say to you that um, the nerves on the right-hand side of the brain will control your actions on the left. The nerves on the left-hand side of the brain will control your actions on the right. Okay? Now, <clears throat> if I take this corpus callosum and show you its function in this brain game. So if everybody could just place the feet flat on the, on the ground, and what I want you to do is to write the number six in the air. So in other words, with your index finger, just write the number six in the air. Continue doing that for a few seconds. Write number six in the air. And you'd notice that when you're starting writing your number six in the air, you're first going anti-clockwise. Once you've done that there now, with your right ankle, don't do anything else, but take your right ankle and swing your right ankle anti-clockwise. So your right ankle's off the ground and you're turning your right ankle anti-clockwise. Okay. Let me just stop the share and then so you can see what I am I'm actually doing. Okay, so as, as, as you can see, right? So now I want you to do the, take the number six, write number six in the air, now do both at the same time. Try and do the both at the same time. So we're going anti-clockwise, you write six in the air, and you're also going anti-clockwise with your right ankle. I'm sure everybody can do that, no problem. But now stop and do one more, one more thing. You write number six in the air, and take your ankle and turn it clockwise. So in other words, I'm turning my ankle clockwise. And at the same time, I'm writing number six in the air. Is it possible? Anybody can hear me? Me too? I can hear you. I'm not sure if I'm doing it right or wrong. <laughs> I don't think I am either. Exactly. I, I really don't think I am either. It yeah. like yeah. you, you, you actually cannot do it. You can never, ever do it. So, you, so, so, so let's go one more time, guys. So we're going number six in the air, and we are actually trying to move our ankles in the opposite direction, which is clockwise. And you see that your ankle is doing its own thing. It's just all sorts of things. Uh, so so that, that's just to show you, that's just basically to show you um, uh, the, the, the power of the brain um, and, 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 and to show you how these nerves, so, so we look at the screen one more time, and then... Um, we, we just look at the screen one more time, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, and we go there to spotlight. And now I am looking at this corpus callosum here is joining the right hemisphere with the left hemisphere. So therefore, these processes and functions can't really take place. Uh, it's just a brain game. It shows you the power of our brain and uh, how we can use our brain to impart knowledge to these young uh, children of South Africa uh, through this amazing uh, portal of uh, e-tuition. Uh, I hope you have enjoyed it, that uh, small brief uh, lecture that I have. There's much, much more to come, especially with, well, with regards to my, my subject, my specialization of life sciences. And I really, really hope that uh, uh, we, we, we move in the right direction. Uh, I thank you, Shah and Nitu. Thank you so much. Um, it was quite interesting. I was doing a little exercise there. Um, and I realized I'm actually left-handed, so I need to pull my left ankle up to do that. And that was amazing. Thank you, Navid, for, for that. That was probably, you know, I, it took me back to grade 12. It took me back to life sciences. And one thing I will honestly say, I had a great life sciences teacher in grade 12, but nothing as exciting as this. 
and um, this really made me feel like sure i could have actually learned so much more in life sciences at the time so thank you so so much for that now ladies and gentlemen I'm, I'm on behalf of you all i'm going to thank you again for that we are going to move on with our progress uh, our program rather i just want to make sure we are conscious of the time because there is another session after this one um we understand like i mentioned life happens sometimes you are sick sometimes there is unexpected power cuts or load shedding in south africa or sometimes you are just unable to make the lecture now what happens in a case like that what happens when you need to sign on but you are unable to or you you were ill now the best person to chat to and go you go through this little aspect and exercise for you and information is mckenna because she is the the rock at the back end she's the one who makes sure that not only the educators are you know looked after communicated with and on on are informed but also she is the go-to person for our students to liaise with once they are enrolled with e-tuition and um, for for their subjects mckenna the floor is yours if you would just would like to tell us a little bit more from an academic you know operation and administration perspective you know what kind of support questions and what is it is that you do on your side to make sure our students once enrolled has an amazing experience um, from start to finish. Hi, thank you, Charles. So to give you an overview, um, I am McKenna Matic. I am your e-tuition administrator. Um, our e-tuition team has set up our systems to make your experience with us as effortless as possible. We are here to provide you with the academic support you require and assist you with reaching your academic goals. We have set up a welcome pack that you will receive when you register with eTuition that will have all the information that you require to see you through your learning experience. Our welcome pack includes a guide on what you need to get started, timetables on which days and times your sessions take place, how to contact us, what you will get out of eTuition and more. So ideally, the support from me in my role as administrator, I'm here to support you and work side by side with the e-tuition team in ensuring that you have the best experience with us. So if you have any questions, I'm your go-to person. A couple of questions that I can go through with you now is, for instance, how do you contact your tutor? On our LMS system that Charles has gone through with you, we have an Ask the Tutor tool that is available. You should get a message. You can directly message your tutor through the LMS and you should get a response within 24 hours. If the tutor for some unforeseen reason has not contacted you or responded within the time frame, you can contact your administrator, which would be me, directly at admin at etuition.co.za and I will follow up the query for you. If you're wondering where and how the sessions are held, we use Zoom via our LMS. What happens if you miss a lesson? How do you catch up on that lesson? All the lessons are recorded. You can access the link to the recorded Zoom session under the virtual classroom folder on your LMS. If you are unable to attend a session due to load shedding, please just got to inform your educator and your administrator um, as soon as you get your load shedding schedule and we'll figure out a plan for you. The sessions are held normally from Monday to Friday. Our session one is at 4.30 p.m. to 6 p.m. Our session two is at 6.30 p.m. to 8 p.m. And on Saturdays, our session one is at 8 a.m. to 9.30 a.m. And session two is at 10 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. Should these time frames change for any unforeseen reasons, we will notify you in advance. However, it is highly unlikely. Thank you, Charles. Kenna, thank you so, so much. I really, really appreciate your taking time to explain. Very simple processes indeed. And it's also very interesting to see that, you know, people can just reach out. And I think that is the big thing, you know, availability of our support staff, as well as our educators is the most important part, ladies and gentlemen, for e-tuition, because we need to be interactive and collaborative on this aspect. Now, I know a lot of um, 
a lot of, of a lot of you might have a question and so so how do we apply how do we sign up for e-tuition so before i get to the questions and answers mckenna and um, where we will be ready and hopefully waiting for you ladies and gentlemen just please note if you've got questions to ask you are more than welcome to type it in the chat if you don't want to unmute yourself and talk um you are more than welcome just type it in the chat and we will answer those questions in the q a session but i just quickly also just want to show you how easy it actually is to to apply with e-tuition i'm going to share my screen for one last time ladies and gentlemen just to show you that so when you are on our website it is a very awesome website that has been been built and i thank you to the it teams who's worked endlessly to get this to where it is and i love it you know it's always it's great to see color engagement and get that feel of what it is that we do but it's very very simple ladies and gentlemen this is our home page it tells you everything that I told you, what we do, what we offer, the benefits, why you can choose e-tuition as your, your provider. So there's also your courses. So ladies and gentlemen, you can see we have different types of sessions at different costings. Now, please note, as you've heard, our sessions are not just one hour sessions. Um, your registration also includes your access to the LM. So if I go, for example, to show you, there's a lot of sessions that you can register for, of course, with us, but it is quite easy. Now, what you do is you're going to click on the button called register now. And what it asks you is to create your e-tuition profile. Now, this is quite simple, ladies and gentlemen. This is an application form. There's no cost and to this application. And secondly, this application form does not hold you liable for any subjects to register with or any of the costing that you might have seen. This is to create your profile with us, which means once your profile is created, you can easily register for sessions or subjects as they as the need feels, whether it is in first first term, second term or third term, because your profile is already online. And please note, as you're getting communications from my side, you would know I respect your privacy, firstly. And secondly, we do not sell your information to an insurance broker to phone you to ask if you want insurance that you actually don't need, because we don't do things like that. We honest people like that. So but very straightforward is your name, your surname, your email, the grade that you are in, as you can see currently, grade 10, 11 and 12. And as we expand, you know, we will be adding grade nine and grade eight. In addition to that, your phone number, alternative phone numbers, as you can see, I'm auto populated already, the school that you are attending, and you create a unique password for you that only you will know. And this giving you the extra security to know that no one else can access your e-tuition profile because you have created a password. Once you are ready, you click register and Bob's your uncle, you have created your, your free e-tuition profile with us. On that, that's where you're going to get a little phone call from me saying, hey, hello, you know, I see that you created a profile. How can we help? What is the next steps? Where do you need assistance with? Now, when it comes to registering for subjects, and I'm just going to go back one page here, you will select the grades that you're in. Now, let's go to life sciences as an example. I'm going to go grade, grade 11. You can say these are the subjects that is there and you can select the subject. Once you select the subject, you choose how many sessions you would like to register for. Now, this is once you've created your profile, you can say, I would like to register for four subjects. As we can see, the costing to that, again, it's 150 Rand per subject. So please don't be freaked out by the amount that you see there. It's only 150 Rand. You add this to your cards. Now you can do this via mobile. You can do this on a desktop like I'm currently doing. And of course, you can even see the description of what is covered in life sciences. So these are um, the subject content and the subject matter as we have received from the Department of Education that they're saying this is what needs to be covered in grade 11 to ensure that a grade 11 student is ready and prepared to write the examinations to move on to grade 12. In addition to that, you will see you'll have your little shopping cart ready. You can view to make sure that you are registering for the right subjects. Now, when you get to, to this section over here, there is an option where you can apply, for example, a coupon code. Now, ladies and gentlemen, if you follow us on Instagram, 
Facebook, LinkedIn, um, and you, you are signed up to our newsletter, if you have already created a profile, you would know there are a lot of opportunities for you to get a bit of an extra discount here and there, um, as we do run occasional promotions and specials, because we understand we want to support our students. It's easy. You add your uh, coupon code if it's applicable and that if we are running any form of promotion or special at the moment in time, which I will tell you there's a couple of things coming up. So you have to definitely uh, like our Facebook page or follow us on Instagram to see what we are going to be doing on that. And if you're in the Durban area, we also have an, a, a really cool partner called Sunrise FM who is also going to be helping us with some great stuff. So definitely check out for that on the radio waves. But it's very straightforward. You add your coupon code, you proceed to check out. And what happens then is, of course, if you are a customer, you need to log in. Now, ladies and gentlemen, once you have logged in, um, it's quite simple. Um, this, the last steps would be for you that you have to add your your payment methods, which would be in the form of a, a credit card or a debit card. As we can see, we are secured from an online payment or gateway perspective. So your, your stuff is definitely, your, your online payment is definitely secure. It's not going to go to some dodgy place. Um, and specifically on top of that, once you are registered, you will get a portal um, a payment and then a welcome pack program handbook will be sent to you as well as your login details for the LMS. Now, if you really are still confused how to do it, our website really gives you five easy steps. Step one, step two, step three, or step five. And if you're a bit lazy to read, you know, I know sometimes it's been a long day, your eyes are tired. It's just very easy. Just click on the video and, and the video will tell you what you need to know. So it's very, very straightforward to create your profile, which we know is free. And then when you register, that is when the costs come into play. So if you have any questions or concerns regarding the the registration process, that, as we mentioned today, any additional questions about the LMS that I've shown you today, or even questions about our academic, operational, and administrative processes, please, ladies and gentlemen, the floor is yours. It is time to ask away. Um, you are more than welcome to, to engage with us now. It is open for some questions and answers. If there is any questions and answers, um, we would highly appreciate that. Any feedback, if you've enjoyed today, I see there is a couple. I love this. Thank you. So engaging. Thank you so much but the floor is yours will students have access to lessons recordings yes uh, and need to they will have access to this so once a lesson is done so we've seen this amazing mock lecture is done um, these sessions actually get uploaded to the lms now you would recall in the lms i showed you it would show you which subjects are available and which you've registered for and you can actually access the recordings of the students, uh, or of, excuse not the students, excuse me, of the, the lecturer on the LMS. So yes, you will have access to those lessons and they have been recorded. Yes. The answer to that? Yes. McKenna, I'm correct in saying that. Is that correct? Yep, that's correct. And if you are unable to access that or unable to find that recorded lesson, again, McKenna is the right person to contact and say, hi, McKenna. Um, I can't find it. Can you please help me? And she's like, no stress. I'll see how I can help you out to make sure that is done. Any other questions um, this morning? From the any of the other guests, any questions? Here we go. If you're unable to fall ill or attend the session, um, as McKenna mentioned earlier, if you are un unable to attend the session or you fall ill, what we would ask you to do, if you are able to, or your parent or a guardian or next to kin, can just notify us that you are sick or unable to attend the session. Um, like McKenna mentioned, we will notify the educators in that, but we will also um, you know, try and see how we can make a plan for you to catch up on that session. We can't necessarily guarantee that we will rerun the session. That is something we will need to look at. However, we might have that recording available for you of that session that you missed to go back to. And should you then have any questions or there are aspects you don't understand, our lecturers, you can engage with them via the LMS as McKenna I mentioned, ask the questions, and that's how we can make sure we streamline to you on top of that. If there is some capacity, you never know, the lecturers or educators might even avail themselves to say, I'm happy to quickly connect with you over the LMS for a short five to 10 minutes just to discuss with you. McKenna, is that correct? Am I hitting the, the nail on the head here with that? Yep, that's perfect. Awesome. 
Thank you so much. Anything else, ladies and gentlemen? Oh. I feel like an auctioner waiting for people to raise their hands like, hey, 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 hey. <laughs> awesome. But um, if there are no more questions, ladies and gentlemen, you can definitely connect with, um, with myself um, if you wanted to find out more. Um, the, the, the email address is applications at etuition.co.za. Um, I will be typing it for you now um, in the chat that you can copy um, etuition. I'm just making sure that I am typing in is that you can also chat to me on WhatsApp. Uh, we have a WhatsApp line that is easy to, to, to talk to, or you can just easily give us a call on the number. And all the details I've put in the chat for you. The one is the, here we go, another. How long before we get a response from admin on a query? Um, McKenna, what is the, the average turnaround time when there is a query that comes your way? How long does it more or less take? Um, I am unable to answer that one. So basically, once we get a query, if it's directly to the tutor or if it's directly to me at admin, we try and respond to it as soon as we can. Um, if the tutor hasn't responded within 24 hours, then I can take on the query and I will try and deal with that query and pass it on to the necessary people as soon as I can. Also within um, a reasonable time frame. Awesome. Thank you so much. So yeah, we definitely, as mentioned, um, we try not to we try not to um, have too long. We want to stay engaging and interactive as much as possible. Um, you know, if there is a bit of a delay, we will say, listen, we will, we've received your query. We'll get to you back to you as soon as possible to ensure that we, we can answer your, your question or your query with full confidence and 100% assurity. And I think that is the most important part for us is the transparency from start to finish. Um, ladies and gentlemen, um, I also just wanted to say thank you again for, for all your time this morning. Um, we are coming to a close and an end for this session. I also want to say thank you to uh, McKenna and our, our awesome um, educator, Nived. Thank you so much. Um, that was, again, I'm, I'm quite, I'm going to try and train my brain to do the exercise and I will tell you when I get that right. I'm going to try and train it to do it so I can go anti and clockwise at the same time. Um, but ladies and gentlemen, if you have any additional questions or anything else, I've also dropped you the, the website address um, link um, on the on the chat. It's all on our website, etuition.co.za. Um, and we thank you again this morning for, for attending this session. And we would just like to say, if you have friends or family that were not able to make it or they haven't even heard about us, by all means, spread the news, you know, sharing is caring. Um, and because we would love you know, to see how we can make a difference in, in, in students' lives for 2022. We are accepting applications for next year. So you're more than welcome to create your free profile. And then you and I can have a conversation leading up to next year on how we can register you. Thank you so much for the thumbs up. I appreciate that. Nisha, thank you so much. If there's nothing else, ladies and gentlemen, I wish you a fantastic weekend. It is a long weekend. Don't forget, Monday is voting day. Um, so thank you so much. Um, enjoy your weekend and, and, you know, be safe, keep safe, and we hope to see you in 2022. Goodbye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.